In the Dark by Stan and Jan Berenstain. Hi, I'm Sister Bear. Welcome to Living Books. This is a story about the time Brother Bear read me a scary book and made me afraid of the dark. Does that ever happen to you? If you want the story read to you, click right here. If you want to play inside the story, click right here. Okay. Being afraid of the dark doesn't just happen to you. <laughs> it happens sometimes to little bears, too. Sister and Brother Bear were at the Bear Country Library. Sister had already chosen her books and was waiting at the checkout desk. Brother Bear, are you going to take all day to pick your books? Hold your horses. I'm looking for a good mystery. I'm checking this out. Brother, how hard can it be to pick a book? I'm going as fast as I can. Well, hurry up. <laughs> Haven't you found anything yet? I'm going to look over here. <laughs> Brother Bear. Sister Bear usually took out storybooks and books about nature and sometimes books of poems. Brother liked those too, but lately he'd become interested in mysteries, especially spooky ones. Hey, this one looks good, he said finally. Hmm, said Sister. It was called The Case of the Crying Cave. It looks scary to me. Did you know that butterflies start life as caterpillars? Oh, boring. The Case of the Crying Cave. I can't wait to read it. Let's check out. Okay, it's about time. Say, this is really good, said Brother later that evening when the Bear family had settled down for some reading. Would you like me to read it to you? He asked Sister. Sister was looking at a storybook about three kittens who were arguing about which was the prettiest, and it was a little boring. Or are you scared? Of course not. Are you going to read it or not? It's pretty scary. I don't care. It's even scaring me. Just read it. Okay, here we go. The Case of the Crying Cave. The mystery began quietly. It told about some bear scouts who were on an overnight campout when the scouts discovered a dark, secret cave. Brother's mystery began to get a little exciting. A mysterious cave, said the bear scouts. We should explore it. And when the cave began to cry and wail, it was anything but quiet. Woo! cried the deep, dark, mysterious cave. Woo! Stop! That's enough! And then the little kittens went into the dark cave. Brother Bear, stop that! Sure is noisy around here tonight. <laughs> I don't know.
don't think I like mysteries. Scaredy bear, scaredy bear. Stop it! Stop it! Scaredy bear, scaredy bear. I'm leaving! And that's quite enough of that. At the Cubs' bedtime, Papa and Mama said good night. Good night. Good night, Cubs. Turned off the light and left the Cubs in the usual sleepy darkness. Good good night, Mama and Papa. Good night. Outside the treehouse, the bright, busy sounds of the day had given way to the soft, soothing sounds of night. The quiet conversation of frogs and toads. The soft cry of the owl. The sigh of the night wind. And if you listened very hard, you could almost hear the softest sound of all. The sound of lightning bugs switching their lights on and off, on and off. I'm taking the garbage out now. Noisier than usual tonight? Hmm? No. But inside the treehouse, Sister Bear wasn't even beginning to fall asleep. That night, the dark didn't seem the least bit quiet and sleepy. In fact, it seemed like the spooky darkness of a scary cave. And the friendly old chest of drawers and funny clothes tree that Papa had made didn't seem so friendly and funny. They seemed more like cave creatures. So when Brother decided to tease her a little more by making a wailing noise, a really spooky wailing noise, it gave her quite a scare. And come quickly, they did. Papa rushed into the room and tripped over the clothes tree. Mama rushed in after Papa and tripped over him. In the commotion, Sister fell out of bed and landed on both of them. <coughs> then Brother, who had started it all with his spooky wail, turned on the light. What a mess! Sister, still scared, was holding on to Papa. Papa was holding on to the toe he had stubbed. Oh! And Mama was looking for the nightcap she had lost in the confusion. All three of them were pretty annoyed with Brother Bear. Ouch! Wow, what a pileup. Uh, what are you guys doing? You know darn well what we're doing. You weren't very nice to your sister, Brother Bear. Yeah. Here, Mama. Thank you, Papa. Come on now, let's get back to bed. It turned out to be a very long night in the Bear's treehouse. Papa and Mama tried to explain that there was nothing to be afraid of in the dark. Except maybe running into a clothes tree and stubbing your toe. But it didn't do any good. Sister absolutely refused to go to sleep with the light off. <laughs> and Brother positively insisted that he couldn't fall asleep with the light on. The next morning, the Bear family was very sleepy-eyed. Boy, said Brother, yawning. I sure don't want to go through another night like that. <laughs> Neither do I, said Papa. <sighs> 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 I 
I only had three hours of sleep last night. That's three more than some of us. <sighs> One night like that is about all we can stand. I think I have an idea that might help. Come with me, Sister Bear. Where are we going? Sister Bear wanted to know. Up to the attic. The attic? But it's dark in the attic, even in the daytime. I know, said Papa. But there's something I want to show you. Anyway, there's nothing so special about the dark. It's just part of nature, like the light. It's your imagination that makes the dark seem spooky sometimes. What's imagination? asked Sister. Imagination is what makes us think that chests of drawers and clothes trees are cave creatures. I wish I didn't have one, said Sister. Don't say that, said Papa. A lively imagination is one of the best things a cub can have. It's imagination that lets us paint pictures. Make up poems. Invent inventions. The trick is to take charge of your imagination, and not let it take charge of you. One of these has to work. Well, finally. No! You see, sister, even grown-ups can make mistakes with fire. I know, Papa. When they got to the attic, Papa began to rummage through boxes, looking for something. Sister tried to follow Papa's advice and not let her imagination take charge. And it worked. A spooky shape turned out to be the shadow of some old tools. What looked like a giant was really some piled up furniture. <gasps> oh, it's just me. Hmm, gee, Papa's right about imagination. Here it is, my old nightlight. The one I used when I was a cub and had a little trouble falling asleep in the dark. You had a nightlight? You were afraid too? Sister couldn't quite believe that her big, powerful papa was ever afraid of the dark. Oh, sure. Most of us are at one time or another. How about reading the rest of the case of the crying cave? Sister asked brother later that day. Are you sure you want me to? Sure. I want to see how it turns out, she insisted. <coughs> the mystery is solved, shouted Bear Scout Ted. Looking down from the hole in the top of the crying cave, the sounds are made by the wind. I don't understand, said Bear Scout Fred. <coughs> I'll show you, said Bear Scout Ted. It's like when you blow across the top of a bottle. <coughs> So that's what it was. The wind. They let their imagination fool them. It turned the sound into a scary monster. When it turned out that there was nothing very spooky about the terrible wailing noise, Sister was a little disappointed. And that night, she said so. I was pretty disappointed by the way the case of the crying cave ended. Why? asked Brother. Because I was hoping the wailing would be a really spooky, scary monster! Cut that out! cried Brother. Is that you, Papa? Yes, it is! You kids go on to sleep now! Ooh! Are you scared? Ooh! Stop <laughs> it! 
Then sister went right to sleep. But brother lay awake for quite some time, listening to the owl hoots and thinking that maybe he'd had enough mysteries for a while. <sighs> Goodbye! If you want the story read to you, click right here. If you want